everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Aisha thank you for being here I realized that I've not done a wrap-up or anything that has to do with reading updates since April when I did the Eid vlog I believe so this video is going to be just me telling you some of the books that I've read this month plants that I had for this month we'll go from there mm? because it doesn't look like I have an idea what this video is going to be about but anyway it's going to be a reading update shall august is the women in translation month if you talk about books on any platform you would have seen people talking about wit and the man booker prize longlist was released on the 26th of july which was my graduation day by the way and i wanted so badly to read books on that long list not because i'm a very booker babe like that i'm not i'm not a booker babe like that I just wanted to because I liked the books on the long list for the International Book and Prize and you would see some of them in my reading for uh, Women in Translation Month. I'll put a screenshot of the long list on here so that you can see. I have only read one book on this long list and I read the shortest, I believe it's the shortest book that I've read so far. I probably should not have started with that book because it just, it put me off wanting to read books on the list first book that I read was Tria Walker, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And when I say that I finished that book and I did not know what happened in that book. Like, I actually, I finished it from beginning to end. I finished reading that book. I did not skip anything. Maybe I should not say that I didn't understand. Anyway, the book is messing with the concept of time and narration and space. At the beginning of the book, it looks like we have two different characters. Towards the middle of the book, we realized that our first character, the one we started off with, I cannot remember his name by the way, looks like he was discovering his past self, like different versions of himself. And then at the end of the book, it just felt like we came to a full circle. I don't want to give spoilers in case this type of book you like reading. I thought that the writing was beautiful. Like you can obviously see that the person that wrote this book, Alan Garner, he knows how to write. Like his writing is beautiful it's very fine like this person understands grammar but i just did not understand the point of the book i was reading i did not give it any rating i didn't give it any stars because it wasn't as if i did not enjoy the book it was just more so that i did not understand the concept of the book i appreciated though that you know it was played with time and space and what exactly reality is that that was what i was even taking away from the book but would I read the type of book again in my life? No, because mm, I don't understand anything, so it just felt like I was wasting my time. I think people that appreciate books that are pleased with the concept of time and space and uh, the authenticity of reality, what people, what characters consider reality, then you definitely enjoy this type of book. That's the only book on the long list that I've read so far. I was going to pick up the other small book, which is Claire Keegan, small things like this, but I have not. I'll probably read it before the end of the month. The other book I'm eager to read on the long list is um, O. William by Elizabeth Trout. So funny enough, I've read the first book in this series, which is called My Name is Lucy Barton. And I actually enjoyed that book. It, again, it's not the type of book I would normally pick up, but I really enjoyed that book. I read it in 2019. And when I discovered that this book is the third book in the series, I just thought, okay, it makes sense. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading that. Um, Night Crawling as well. I don't know when I'm going to find the time to read all these books. They will probably have announced the winner of the prize before I finish reading all the books on long list. I also want to read Glory because this is the second book by Nova Let Blawayo and the only book by an African on this long list. Trying to see if any of the other books is immediately calling me i like the idea of after Safo. i like the blob it looks like he has some feminist angle that i might vibe with but i don't know i don't know if you've read any book on the book along list please let me know and if you're also reading through the long list like i intended to let me know which book i should pick up next that would catalyze my interest in reading all the books on the long list so yeah that's it for my book reading my venture into book reading let me move on to my women in translation month which if you know me short story september is my favorite theme on bookstagram in the reading space 
followed very closely by Women in Translation Month because I love the idea of Women in Translation. I love reading translated fiction. So this is one of my favorite reading months. The good thing is that most of these books are very, they are relatively short books, the kind of books that I like, which makes them very easy to read through. And another interesting thing is that a couple of them were on the International Booker Prize long list. So Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro. I love that book. I gave you five stars. See, if you're planning to read any book for the Women in Translation Month, pick up Elena Knows if you've not read it. That book is... That is the type of book that I like. This book touched on very different themes. It touched on abortion. It touched on ableism, um, ageism, you know, naturally sexism in religion. And the book is less than 200 pages. See, do you know how mad your writing talent has to be for you to be able to do all of that in less than 200 pages? You have to be... Our main character, who is Elena, she is a woman in her 60s but she happens to have Parkinson syndrome. So Elena's daughter was found hanging from the church bell, dead, and Elena is convinced that a child was killed. So we follow Elena trying to uncover the reason behind her daughter's death, who killed her daughter. And along the way, we see how she, she has had to deal with ageism and ableism. And we also see in the larger commentary of things is abortion how forcing people to have children does more harm than good there's also an interesting thing that this woman does in this book that i really liked how hard it is to be a caregiver to somebody that has a form of disability so elena's daughter i can't even remember rita her name is rita elena's daughter rita is the primary caregiver for elena when the parkinson syndrome becomes advanced and She's the only one, she's the only caregiver for this woman. She's having to undo the mental stress that comes with being a caregiver alone. I have an idea of how difficult things must have been for this character to take care of her mom. You know, watching somebody that you've looked up to all your life suddenly become somebody you have to take care of. There's, there's something that does to your psyche. I really liked it and I'm so sad that I did not read it up until now but i'm glad i've eventually read it chap the second book that i've read so far for women in translation month is abandoned by sangeeta i cannot pronounce her surname this book is also about abortion the main theme in the book is abortion but from a different angle our main character i cannot remember her name now so we have two characters the woman is she i can't remember her name and ru ru is Ishiwari's son. The woman is an artist, she's a writer, and she did not want to give it to Ru, her son, but she loves her son and she tries to run away from home, but somehow her son follows her. So now she's having to deal with the guilt of not wanting to have this child, the fact that she did not want to give it to the son, and the love that she has for the son, and the artistic side of her that wants to abandon everything and focus on her writing so an interesting thing that was done in this book is that this main character this woman she was split into two because technically she is split into two she's split between her artistic side which wants to literally just abandon everything and run away to write and the other part of her that has been conditioned by society to uh, cater to people around her specifically to the men around her and that unfortunately includes her son my biggest takeaway from this book is that forcing women to have children does not do any good for any party involved because at the end of the day my favorite character in this book was Rue and he suffered so much but I also understand the fact that this woman, his mother, was forced into giving birth to him. I love how the author emphasizes that the people that are going to suffer whenever you force people to have children are those children go, 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 that you are claiming to protect. It sucks, but I really enjoyed this book. I really, really enjoyed this book. The next book that I read is I Want to Die, but I Want to Eat Topoki by Baek Sehi. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. Oh, I just realized I've not been saying the language that these books have been translated from. So, 
I didn't know it was translated from the Spanish. Abandon was translated from the Tamil. And I want to die, but I want to eat Toboki was translated from the Korean. This book is a collection of transcription that the author has done from some of the therapy sessions that she has had with her therapist. So it was in this book that I discovered that there's such a thing as light depression. It's called dysthymia. And we just see how the author's session was with our therapist and i think you will be able to learn one or two things especially if you find if you realize that you probably experienced this dysthymia at some point in your life it's very validating there's no oh i finally overcame my light depression at the end of the book it's very real very relatable and the therapist also wrote a note at the end of the book and that's where the title of the book came from that I want to die but I want to eat Toboki. And I think I love the therapist notes because they humanize themselves. Like, yes, even though I am the therapist in this instance, I'm also a person and I could have done better in some of the sessions that we had. And we're all going through a lot, blah, blah, blah. I just, it's just very humanizing. And I finally finished my copy of Minor Detail by Adanya Shibli. So I started reading this book last year, around June. And it was very heavy for me so i dropped it i was scared to read it for some reason so i read the first half of the book um and i dropped it so now i've completed it and it was still very difficult for me to read but minor detail is split into two the first half of the book follows a crime that was committed this is not a spoiler by the way a palestinian Bedou bedouin girl was raped by a group of israeli soldiers and in the second half of the book we have this character the character appears to have some form of disability it feels like she has some form of disability so this character suddenly finds the crime that was committed earlier in the book in a newspaper and she realizes that the crime was committed 25 years before she was born on the same exact same day she was born but 25 years before we don't know how old this lady is by the way we just know that the crime was committed exactly 25 years before the day she was born even though this particular detail is very minor our character fixates on it and through all of our fixation and our embarking on a journey to uncover you know a new um detail about this crime we see how difficult it is to live as palestinian in the occupied territories now which is a major part of this book i liked the second half of the book more than the first half of the book for some reason and one interesting thing i really like about the book is how again the story comes in full circle so just like trialco walker this story comes in full circle but it's easier to understand this one than it is to understand track walker for me so we see the first half of the book and second half of the book mirroring themselves at some point and because you see those mirror images you kind of know where the second half of the book is going to end up in if you are down to read some palestinian books definitely pick up my no detail by adanya shipley so those are the books I've completed so far. I am currently reading Celestial Bodies by Joha Alhati, which interestingly won the International Man Booker Prize for 2019. I feel like I'm reading a lot of Man Booker Prizes. I've been wanting to read this book for a long time now. And I started reading it on Sunday, I believe, last Sunday. And I'm just that 100 page, by the way. Let's just say that this book is disappointing me so far. I don't hate it but it's disappointing because i expected more from it i'm still going to read the new book that the author just published which is called bitter orange trees just because i want to read it i feel like i will probably enjoy that one more than i'm enjoying this one right now but i'm almost done with the book i'll try to finish it before this week ends inshallah the blob says it's about three humani women but there are so many different characters in this book that i don't even know where to start from we have the three sisters, Maya, Asma, and we have Kaula. But there are so many different characters in the book that I think it's inaccurate to say that it's just about three Romani women. But yeah, it's just following their lives, uh, following their decisions. I think the main theme that I've seen so far is how women are treated 
and most especially how men that don't fit the stereotypes of alpha male are treated i think that's like the main theme that i've been able to extricate from my reading so far so the next book that i'm currently reading is the mom of bees by sofia segovia this is also translated from the spanish into english Celestial bodies is translated from the arabic into the english minor detail was translated from the arabic into the english as well so mamas of the bees is a multi-generational book i am just about 10 chapters into the book it's, it's quite big as well so this book has 100 chapters and i've just read 10 chapters so far <laughs> god away to heaven so far so good i actually i've actually enjoyed the book there's mystery kind of written into it and it's captivating the first part of the book is very interesting i don't know where the book is going yet but i feel like i'm going to enjoy it it's set in mexico during one of the world wars i don't know whether it's the first one or the second one and i mean likes the book so we'll see how it goes those are the books that i've read so far in august thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like share subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye <laughs>